OK, so we're going to solve a problem where we need to find an arithmetic sequence which always avoids the Fibonacci numbers. So we're looking for an arithmetic sequence where the nth term is of the form a plus d times n, where a and d are both positive integers. The approach we'll take to solve this problem actually involves modular arithmetic. So first, let's just explore why this is a sensible approach to take. If we just look at an example, let's say maybe a was 4 and d was 7, then our first term would just be 4, 4 plus 7 times 0, then you keep going up in 7s, so it's an arithmetic sequence. So you can see here, all of these numbers are actually, thinking of these modulo 7, they're all equivalent to 4 modulo 7. So if you were to divide any of these numbers by 7, you'd get a remainder of 4. If we were to look at a different example, maybe with a larger value of a, so maybe a is 10 and d is only 3, then our sequence would start with 10, 13, 16, 19, and so on. So we don't have all of the integers which would be equivalent to 10 modulo 3, but all of these integers in the sequence are equivalent to 10, which is also equivalent to 1 modulo 3. So then the more general picture, just with a and d then, is that our sequence begins with a and goes up by d from term to term. So if we were to consider all of these numbers modulo d, these are all equivalent to a modulo d. So then the problem is reduced to trying to find values of a and d so that the Fibonacci numbers are never equivalent to a modulo d. We'll explore this now by trying some different values of d. So there's some values of d we could quite quickly rule out. So for example, d equals 1, our sequence would just look like a, a plus 1, a plus 2, and so on. So it's all of the positive integers greater than or equal to a. And clearly this is going to overlap with actually infinitely many Fibonacci numbers. So we haven't managed to avoid the Fibonacci numbers with d as 1. If we look at d as 2, then our sequence would be a, a plus 2, a plus 4, and so on. So if a was even, then we'd just have all of the even numbers greater than or equal to a, or if a was odd, then we'd have all the odds greater than or equal to a. But if we look at our Fibonacci numbers, let's say we start with 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on, it always seems to go even, odd, odd, even, odd, odd. In a repeating pattern. And if we consider the Fibonacci numbers modulo 2, we can prove this. So it's 0, 1, 1, then 1 plus 1. Instead of writing this as a 2, we write this as 0 modulo 2. 1 plus 0 gets us to 1. 0 plus 1 gives us 1. And it repeats like this, 0, 1, 1. So you can see our Fibonacci numbers contain infinitely many even numbers and also infinitely many odd numbers. So unfortunately, taking d as 2 isn't going to work. We'll always have some overlap there with the Fibonacci numbers. So let's try d equals 3, and we'll follow this modulo 3 approach now. So if we consider the Fibonacci numbers modulo 3, we'd have 0, 1, 1, 2, then 1 plus 2, instead of writing 3, we turn this into a 0, 2 plus 0 gives us 2, 0 plus 2 gives another 2, and then instead of writing this as 4, we turn this into a 1 modulo 3, 2 plus 1 gets us back to 0, 1 plus 0 gives us a 1, and we start to see there's actually some repetition here. And the Fibonacci numbers then, modulo 3, have this periodic behaviour. And you can see, starting from 0 and 1, this will determine how the rest of the sequence follows. So the fact that we've returned to a 0, 1 pair here determines how the rest of the sequence repeats from there. And you can see that we've got 0, 1 and 2 in this repeating pattern. So this is effectively telling us that, let's try some different values of a, so maybe if you just had a was equal to 0 and your nth term was 3n, so all of your integers that are just a multiple of 3, unfortunately there's infinitely many of these because you've got infinitely many Fibonacci numbers equivalent to 0 modulo 3. So if you wanted to try 3n plus 1, you've also got infinitely many numbers equivalent to 1 modulo 3, so this won't work. And similarly, 3n plus 2 isn't going to work because you've got infinitely many numbers in the Fibonacci sequence equivalent to 2 modulo 3. If we tried larger values of a, so 3n plus 3, this is effectively the same sequence as just taking 3n, it's just shifted along by 3. So these are all effectively integers which are equivalent to 0 modulo 3. And again, this wouldn't work. And similarly for 3n plus 5 would be equivalent to 3n plus 2, and 3n plus 4 would be equivalent to 3n plus 1. So even increasing the value of a isn't going to help there. So we can see because the Fibonacci numbers contain infinitely many numbers equivalent to 0, 1, and 2 modulo 3, we can't take d equal to 3, so we'll need to try some larger values of d. 
So for d equals 4, we can consider the Fibonacci numbers modulo 4. We have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2 plus 3 is 1, 3 plus 1 gets us back to 0, and 1 plus 0 gives us 1. So we see we have this repetition once again, since we've returned to this 0, 1 pair. And unfortunately here, 0, 1, 2, and 3 are all represented. So taking 4n as our nth term, or 4n plus 1, 4n plus 2, 4n plus 3, None of these would work, and similarly for larger values of a. So unfortunately, d equals 4 isn't going to work. This will always have some overlap with the Fibonacci numbers. For d equals 5, let's consider the Fibonacci numbers modulo 5. So you have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. 2 plus 3 gets us to 0. 0 plus 3 gives us a 3. 3 plus 3 is 1. 3 plus 1 gives us 4. It's not actually obvious if this is even going to repeat. And this could take us quite a long time doing this case by case for different values of d. But we can use the fact that once you have a pair, say for example 0, 1, this uniquely determines how the rest of the sequence is going to behave. And because we're looking at the numbers modulo 5, there are only a finite number 5 times 5, so there are only 25 possible pairs that can appear consecutively. So once we've reached 26 pairs of numbers in our sequence, the Fibonacci numbers will contain some sort of repetition of a pair, which means that they will eventually repeat. So the Fibonacci numbers actually modulo anything are always going to be periodic, we can say. So for d equals 5, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 have appeared, and we also know that eventually this will loop back round and repeat. So unfortunately, d equals 5 isn't going to work either. So 5n, 5n plus 1, 5n plus 2, plus 3, or plus 4, all of these different sequences will have overlap with the Fibonacci numbers. So similarly for d equals 6, we consider the Fibonacci numbers modulo 6, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 2, 5 plus 2 gives us a 1, 2 plus 1 gives us 3, 1 plus 3 gives us 4. So even though we haven't found the point where the sequence repeats, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 all represented here, and later the Fibonacci numbers will repeat. So unfortunately, d equals 6 isn't going to work either. And for d equals 7, we'll consider the Fibonacci numbers mod 7, so 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, then 8 goes down to 1. 5 plus 1 gives us a 6. 6 plus 1 gets us back to 0. We have a 6, another 6. 6 plus 6, 12 is equivalent to 5. Then 6 plus 5, 11 is equivalent to 4. So once again, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 all represented here. So unfortunately, we can't use d equals 7, because then we'll have some overlap with our sequence and the Fibonacci numbers, whatever value of a we take. So now let's try d equals 8. So the Fibonacci numbers taken modulo 8 go 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. 3 plus 5 gets us back to 0, followed by a 5 another 5, 5 plus 5 gives us 2, 2, 7, 1, then 7 plus 1 gives us 8, which returns to 0, 1 plus 0 gives us a 1, and you can see we've actually reached the point now where the Fibonacci numbers loop back round. So we have this 0, 1 pair, which determines how the rest of the sequence will follow. And this is really nice because now modulo 8, we've included 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7, but the numbers 4 and 6 don't actually appear in this list. So then we've solved our problem then, because you could take Fibonacci numbers modulo 8, and you see that nothing is equivalent to 4 or 6 modulo 8. So you could take, for example, un is 4 plus 8n, and we know because there's nothing equivalent to 4 modulo 8 in the Fibonacci sequence, that this arithmetic sequence won't intersect at all with the Fibonacci numbers. And similarly, we could take un is equal to 6 plus 8n, and because there's nothing equivalent to 6 in the Fibonacci sequence, we know that this sequence avoids the Fibonacci numbers. Slightly more generally then, we could take not just 4, but anything equivalent to 4 modulo 8. So we could take 4 plus 8k, where k could be a positive or even a negative integer, plus 8n. And similarly, we could have 6 plus 8k plus 8n could be our nth term here, where k again could be a positive or a negative integer. And of course, you could try some larger values of d here, we have managed to solve the problem of finding an arithmetic sequence which avoids the Fibonacci numbers entirely.